Good evening. Today we're talking with Abby Pinter. She is my afternoon co-op and we are absolutely proud to have her here on the practice. She's really quite amazing. She's going to be doing a presentation today and this is her free week so she had a choice to choose what she wanted to present. And Abby, why don't you tell us what you're presenting today? So I decided to present um, London cab drivers and um, their hippocampus. So it's different than other individuals, and I will explain why. That sounds fascinating. Yes. So just a couple of uh, background information about this. So scientists have found that London taxi cab drivers, their memory center, which is the hippocampus in their brain, is larger than the average individual of the same intelligence, um, age, and level of education. They have also found that navigational demands stimulate brain development and being exceptional in one area of memory may inhibit another. These are just some things to keep in mind while I'm presenting, just a little background. Before you go any farther, did you say being exceptional in one area may inhibit another? Of memory. I may use that as an excuse next time I'm, I'm kind of having a, an airheaded <laughs> moment. All right, I'll let you go on, yeah. though. All right. Um, so because they realized that the hippocampuses were larger in these London taxi cab drivers, they were wondering why. So they started by looking at the maps of different areas and the taxi cab drivers in each of these areas. So if you look at the map of Manhattan, many of the streets are like parallel and perpendicular and kind of in a pattern so it's not super difficult to navigate. And then we look at Paris here and it looks kind of sporadic at first However, they have a little pattern. They have 20 administrative districts that form a clockwise spiral around Sen. Um, so it looks a little bit sporadic, but it's not actually. It has a little bit of a pattern to it. Then we look at London. And you can see that some of the areas, they have perpendicular roads, but overall it's kind of random and a little bit more of a challenge to navigate. Holy cow, does that look complicated? Yeah. So once they realized that the streets were kind of different, they decided to look at what it takes to become a taxi cab driver in London. So they actually have to go to a taxi school for about three to four years. They have to learn all the streets and they have to memorize over 25,000 streets. They, after class for the three to five years, they'll go out on like mopeds and they'll go around and memorize the streets and then they have to memorize all the tourist attra attractions on these streets. So they start with the streets and then the attra attractions and um, all this information that they gain on um, Londoners called the knowledge. And just to give you an idea of how grueling this is, only about 50% of the people that go to the school actually pass their exams and get their license. Holy cow. Yeah, so it's pretty intense. So this is a visual representation of the brain. So these two are the London taxi cab driver brain. And then this is an individual of similar age, intelligence, and level of education. And you can see this sagittal view of the brain. This hippocampus is um, larger than this one right here. And then we have the transverse view. And you can again see that it's larger than the other one. Wow. Yeah. And so um, a neurologist at the College of London um, Ellen McGuire, she wanted to look at sim situations similar to this, so she decided to study western scrub jays and squirrels, and she decided to study them because they are a species that they'll hide their food and they have to remember it to come back and eat it. So she found that the hippocampuses in these animals were larger than those of similar species who did not hide their food. So this led her to kind of the ultimate study to see if this knowledge that they had gained from going to school, the taxi school, was actually enlarging their hippocampus. And so McGuire and Catherine Willett followed a group of 100 individuals for um, four years, and they started out by taking MRIs of each of the individuals, and they found that the hippocampus was of similar size in all individuals. And 79 of these were taxi trainees, which means they're going to school regularly and trying to learn all these streets and stuff. And then 30 of one of the other individuals were just regular individuals, but they were of the same intelligence, level of education, and age, just to rule out any confounding variables. 
and they found that the London taxi cab drivers had more gray matter in their posterior hippocampus than the other individuals. So they periodically would take MRIs and see if the hippocampus was enlarged at all. And 39 of those 79 were actually successful um, taxi cab drivers, so they earned their license and everything. And they found that those individuals had the largest hippocampus. And they also found that um, the longer an individual was a taxi cab driver, the larger their hippocampus would be. So they had some pretty good evidence for the taxi school enlarging their hippocampus. So how could this actually happen? So um, there are neurons in the brain and they could grow potentially because of this because navigational demands will stimulate this. And the connections between these neurons could also grow. And in addition to this, there are glial cells, which help support and protect neurons, and these could also grow. Glial cells. Glial. Yep. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about the anterior, hippo anterior hippocampus. Um, so I mentioned earlier that they had an enlarged posterior hippocampus, but scientists have found that because their posterior hippocampus has enlarged, it was at the expense of their anterior hippocampus. So, um... They knew that the posterior hippocampus was vital in spatial navigation and things that these tax cab drivers would need, um, but they found that when they were doing these memory tests, the successful, so out of those 39, the successful taxi cab drivers did not perform better in all of them. And one of these tests was the Ray Astrid complex figure test. So what you have to do for this memory test is you will stare at this, an image like this. It kind of looks like a dollhouse. It's full of lines and squiggles. And then you're allowed to look at it for a allotted amount of time. And then 30 minutes later, you'll have to sketch it from memory. And so they found that the successful trainees performed worse on this than any other regular individual and they think that's because this could be like stimulated by the anterior hippocampus. That is so hip. Yep. And then I have my sources. That is absolutely fantastic. Thank you. you know this this is a presentation I never suspected first of all. You know we, we asked uh, our co-ops here at the office to do a lot with medical stuff and I love your free choice choices because you guys come up with such great stuff. It really does lead credence to the taxi cab drivers of London who were so beside themselves when Uber came in and wanted to take over and they were so upset I didn't understand why but this certainly changes things for me if they have to go through all that training and sacrifice their anterior hippocampus for it I feel like there needs to be a, a reward for that so I could see why they felt so offended or so unjustified for lack of a better term thank you so much Abby you are amazing this was a wonderful presentation thank you.